Hi. We're going to talk about another form of factoring. It's a little bit easier, maybe, or maybe it's harder. It's called special products, and this special product is called the difference of two squares. Remember back in chapter four, back in one of the previous modules, when you learned about multiplying polynomials, we multiplied conjugates. These are conjugates. When you multiply conjugates, you get this. When you multiply this, you get two conjugates. So notice that x squared minus 16 equals x plus 4 times x minus 4. 4 is the square root of 16. X is the square root of x squared. Now let's look at 25x squared minus 81. Both of these are perfect squares. And look what they factor into. 5x plus 9. 5x minus 9. Now 5x is the square root of 25x squared, and 9 is the square root of 81. Now here's a tricky one coming up. x to the fourth minus 16. x to the fourth is a perfect square. The square root of x to the fourth is x squared. And the square root of 16 is 4, so we can actually factor this by the difference of two squares and get x squared plus 4 and x squared minus 4. But look, x squared minus 4 can be factored by the difference of two squares. The square root of x squared is x and the square root of 4 is 2. So the complete answer to this, the factorization of x to the fourth minus 16, would be x squared plus 4 times x squared plus, oh, times x plus 2 times x minus 2. Let me read that again. x squared plus 4 times x plus 2 times x minus 2. Well, why don't we factor this? And here's the answer. Warning! If you have the sum of two squares, that is, if you have a squared plus b squared, that is not factorable. So x squared plus 4 is not factorable because of the plus sign. x squared minus 4 is factorable because of the minus sign. <clears throat> Look at x squared plus 16. x squared plus 16 is not factorable. It cannot be factored. Even though x squared minus 16 can be factored. x squared minus 16 can be factored, but x squared plus 16 cannot be factored. So this is factoring by the difference of two squares. Now we're going to be talking about factoring a perfect square trinomial. We talked about this a little bit also, that when you square a binomial, you get something that looks like this. The square of the first term the square of the last term, and a middle term that's two times the first term times the second term. Whenever you see something that looks like this or could be, you need to check and see if it's a perfect square trinomial. We're going to do that right now. The square root of x squared is x, and the square root of 4 is 2. Now, will the middle term be 2 times x times 2?
Yes, it will. So this is a perfect square trinomial and it can be factored very quickly into x plus 2, that quantity in parentheses squared. This is just a shortcut. You can always square it, uh, square this by grouping, but it's nice to know about this. Now we're going to be doing something really hard, factoring by the sum of two cubes. You're going to have to memorize this formula. Read it to yourself out loud over and over again. Make a flashcard, flash it at yourself over and over again. Whenever you add two perfect squares, it factors into this formula. And here's how you use the formula. Suppose you have 8x cubed plus 27. Well, 8x cubed is 2x cubed, that quantity, and 27 is 3 cubed. So now our a in the formula is 2x and our b in the formula is this, 3. So everywhere you see an a, put a 2x. And everywhere you see a b, put a 3. And here's how you do it. We have 2x plus 3, parentheses 2x quantity squared, minus 2x times 3 plus 3 squared. Now work that out. You'll have 2x plus 3 times 4x squared minus 6x plus 9. There you go. Piece of cake, right? Well, no, it's not. I know it's hard. It's going to be hard to remember. Try to remember this, though. This helped me that the sign here is going to be the same as the sign here, while this sign is going to be the opposite of whatever that sign is. This sign will always be a plus. Always. P-L-U-S. It's real fun on a whiteboard type, type tablet to write sideways. Okay, it's not fun. Here we go. Now we're going to look at the difference of two cubes. And that formula is a to the third minus b to the third equals quantity a minus b times quantity a square plus ab plus b square. <coughs> You're not going to use it a lot, but you will use it sometime. So you've got to know it. Now, we're going to do a problem that's very similar to the last problem, except this time we have a minus sign in the middle. 8x to the third can be written as quantity 2x cubed, and 27 can be written as 3 cubed, so that just like before, your a is 2x and your b is 3. And everywhere you see an a, stick in a 2x. And everywhere you see a b, stick in a 3. So we'll have 2x. We'll have 2x minus 3 times 2x squared plus 2x times 3 plus 3 squared. So we'll have 2x minus 3 times 4x squared plus 6x. <coughs> 
plus 9. There you have it. You've factored by the difference of two cubes. Now, just like before, look at this. This sign is exactly the same as this sign. While this sign is exactly the opposite of that sign. And this sign is always a plus. Okay, in math, always look for patterns.